Okay, this video I'll make it quick and to the point. Ten things e-commerce brands waste time on that doesn't matter. Plus one bonus at the end. First one, the only offer that can be run is discounts. That's what people think that the only offer. Uh, I would encourage if you can look up offers uh, video in the same channel, Bharat News, and you will find eight different types of offers that can be run. Here are all the eight types of offers that can be run. These are covered in a different video. You can definitely check them out. Second, sales aren't happening because of bad website UI. A lot of our clients again and again pause our services because they feel that we'll revamp the website and get started with us again. And they do. They do always start with us. Okay, that's fine. But most of the time, website is not bad. It's because we should not change the website. Is not the answer here. The value of communication, the value communicated, is not reached. The value you are communicating with your ads, or value you are communicating with the content product, that is not happening. That's the main problem. It's not the bad website. Even on a very bad website, you still get conversions. The reason being, you have enough motivation has been instilled in the audience to get them to purchase the product. If there is a bad website, the only reason I will not purchase a product is if the checkout is not working. If they have one buy now button and I can see the product image with some information, there is nothing more needed if uh, for uh, sales to happen. Yes, a couple of changes here and there might get you more conversions, but sales not happening at all. It means there is no fundamentally there is a mistake in the category product ads. It's not because of bad website again and again. Problem is motivation, not design. Sticking to just one funnel. Uh, people run ads, get sales. Run ads, get sales. That should not be there. It should be run ads. You should think in terms of funnel, in terms of ladders. You have multiple ladders. One is your ads ladder. Second is your influencer ladder. Third is your SEO. Fourth is your organic ladder. So as they progress, as the audience progresses, they can come down any one ladder and get into your brand. That is how you should be thinking about as a funnel. Funnel not directly, but as a in between ladders, in between stages of the journey. Next, but build multiple doors. That is ladders. Next, mixing more than one value prop in a single image ad. Now the problem here is this is one of the ad. They are saying too many things. They are showing a photo of something, and then they are saying they this used to have a 25 character limitation. I'm not understanding clearly. Maybe I'm not the target market. My Tesla can update with 90 character text limit, 25 character headline seems to be gone. Okay, but try to follow the rule of one in your image ads. That's a fundamental mistake. One rule, rule of one says one product, one audience, one message, and one value prop. That's it. Very very strict, and we follow it, especially in image and carousel ads. We just stick to it, no matter what. Because every time we have gone with two, okay, let's sneak in the two benefits or let's sneak in four benefits, it does not work. People are convoluted in terms of what should I buy. Don't confuse them; they'll never buy. If you can convince, only then they will buy. Next, underestimating shipping cost optimization. Uh, in the four years we have been there, I have rarely seen some particular custom, some particular client who said, "I have worked through the shipping rates and I've got it down." There's not even a single instance, but it's an underrated mark. How do you do it actually? Let's get started. Every order milestone, reach out to your shipping provider and ask them give me a better rate because I have hit the thousand order mark because I have hit a ten thousand dollar mark, ten thousand order mark. Give me a better rate. I'm giving you so much business. Then give me a better rate. It should be that it should be very persistent in terms of communication. If he's not doing the first time, hit it on the second time. You're a business. You're an entrepreneur. That should be the persistence. Then, rarely utilize second product discount. This is one of the discounts we have covered in the offer video, wherein you create a discount where they get a second product on a percentage off or a dollar off, anything for that matter. If shipping cost remains same between your adding one product or adding two products, then always push more products. You will get more margin there, more products in the website that uh, you get give, get a second product and get 20% off on your second product get 30% off your second product no matter what your shipping cost remains same if the margin will work out then the margin you are getting is higher always next failing to advertise the highest ltv product for 6 out of 10 brands don't know which is the product which is giving them highest ltv i am not talking about aov or selling price i am talking about ltv per product bought 
if I bring a, if I first bought from any website a face wash, then what's the LTV of mine? That should be based on face wash as my product, first product. That should be a metric you should be tracking and always advert, not always, at least majority of times advertise products which have high LTV. Though you might have a higher CAC in the first end, front end, you might acquire a better customer in the back end because of high LTV and they'll stay, stay with you for longer, which will not compress your uh, financials and cash flows in the longer term. So failing to advertise in the highest LTV, even if you're breaking in on the first order, impact on organic because of this is big, because you have the LTV. The fundamental reason you have a high LTV is because the product is so good that people are referring to others and they are buying it. And they are coming back to buy other products. That's the fundamental reason, which means why don't you advertise your best product? That's like saying, I have the best face wash in the world and still I'll not advertise, I'll advertise a cream which is 10th, 12th in the world. No, you should be advertising your face wash and max it out. Next, no keyword and metric glossary sheet. This is rarely used by brands, particularly if you have more than 5 to 10 percent team, then you should be running through a single sheet PDF which details all the metrics from what do you call an ad, what do you call an asset, what do you call a creative, what do you call CPA, do you call AMAR, do you call it MAR? What is it? Clearly defined according to your context. It should not be the context of what is there in best practice. It should be your context. It should be your glossary sheet, your brands. Align your team, define your definitions. That should be the move. Next, spending big budget on video ads on an untested angle. If you are spending actually spending on unpolished asset of a video ad, polished asset, I'm sorry, then test the angle specifically using an image ad first. On a, say you are testing, you are, have a polished video ad which says about the variety of products you have got, variety of shoes you have got. Then it should be your fundamental thing that you should be testing variety angle in the image first and see how it sticks. If it has a good CTR, if it has a good hold over the purchases, CPA, then go for the video ads, big budget ads because that will likely less, it will be that probability of failure. Next not utilizing the video framework that has saved thousands. This is one of my video which has saved thousands of rupees for brands because they are using line, utilizing a video framework which I suggested here where you can run tens of video ads with very minimal cost. There is a complete video on this. You can just search it on my account, YouTube. Next, the bonus which I was talking about, not subscribing to Bharat Minutes. Just kidding, but please subscribe, do subscribe for it. Thank you, thank you. As a sum up, the main focus should be how should you drive the down cost down and increase the perceived value of the product. I'm not saying increase the value directly, but the perceived value also. That should be the scale and motto of anything. Thank you, thank you for watching.